Hey everybody, welcome back to another haul video for the month of October. It's a little bit late, but I wanted to make sure that I got every book in hand for me to make this video. So let's get started. First one on the list here is Frieden Volume 9. The anime came out recently and it's been a huge success. A lot of people are into this series now. And if you are interested in my thoughts, I do have a first impressions video on the series on this very channel. I'll link it up towards the end of the video so you guys can click on it and check it out. It would mean a ton if you do. But yeah, Frieden Volume 9 continuing this excellent uh, fantasy slice of life series. Really enjoy this. This is currently one of my my favorite Shonen Sunday reads. Next one up is Hunter Hunter Volume 37. It's always good to get more Togashi and I have to be honest it's been a while since I read Volume 36 so I think I'm gonna go back and start this arc again to appreciate the story and what's happening here in Volume 37 and uh, I think it'll make the story flow a little bit better if I'm uh, reading one volume after the other and not depending on this huge gap of me trying to remember. <laughs> but yeah this is uh, always fun to get more more of Hunter Hunter. We got Record of Ragnarok Volume 8. Now, I don't want to spoil it because half the fun of this series is finding out which deity comes out on top and wins the fight, the round. I, I hate getting these books, but I also love it. But the art is always impressive. It's such a fast paced read that I typically wait and have like two or three volumes on hand and then binge it. So yeah, Record of Ragnarok Volume 8. Asadora Volume 7 from Naoki Urusawa. I have not read Volume 6 as of me making this video, but I'll catch up and on one of my reading vlogs, I'll definitely talk about it. Since this story is still ongoing, I can't do a full review on it, but I can share my thoughts on the series with those reading vlogs that I've been putting out. Another release from Junji Ito, Mimi's Tales of Terror, is the latest hardcover release. And this one is pretty interesting. Instead of being a completely original work, it's more of Ito adapting like creepypasta or urban legends from Japan and famous stories like that with his own brand of terror and iconic visuals. So yeah, really excited to check this out eventually. Let's move on to some Seven Seas books here. And the first one is Kemono Jihen Volume 8. I really enjoy this series. One of my favorite yokai inspired or themed uh, shonen books. Uh, this one's a ton of fun and I am excited to read this. I haven't read it yet as of this video. Okay, I know you got an eyebrow raised right about now. You're judging me, I know. Here is Succubus and Hitman with probably the riskiest uh, manga cover that I've ever owned. I was shocked when I saw it, but it's, I guess, I hate using this term, but it is my guilty pleasure. It's a B-movie horror action series, and I, I enjoy it. So yeah, I'm going to own up to it. <laughs> I have a video on Volume 1 if you want to check it out where I talk a little bit about it, but it's it's like John Wick meets Death Note, if that makes sense, but definitely for the mature crowd, not safe for work. Next up is The Dangers in My Heart. Here we have volume seven, continuing this wonderful little series. Now, spoilers for the channel. I do have an upcoming video where I talk about uh, Dangers in My Heart a little bit more in depth, sort of a series review or impressions, I guess, on it. So look forward to that. I love these compact books here from Seven Seas and I love the art on this from Morio Sakurai. A really fun story here with unexpected characters because you have the beautiful popular girl and she falls in love with the antisocial nerd geek and just a quirky mismatch of personalities that brings out the sparks and romance in them. Sword of the Demon Hunter, Kijin Gentosho Volume 3. I really enjoyed the first two volumes, continuing this dark fantasy epic samurai story. And what's interesting is the light novel was only 13 volumes. Now, I don't know how long the manga is going to last. Hopefully it doesn't go farther than 13 volumes because I do like collecting shorter series. Love the art on this wonderful action packed story with some time travel aspects and demons and samurai sword play. So definitely do check it out if you're interested. Marmalade Boy Collector's Edition Volume 3. We got two more of these collector's editions to go and we'll have the entirety of this famous uh, shoujo series. And this is just a top tier release. I love the trim size and the attention to detail with the uh, colored pages and cover galleries and all that stuff. I wish all the other famous books would get collector's editions like this. Let's move on to Kodansha releases. 
Inspector Volume 15, one of my favorite detective mystery series with yokai elements and Japanese folklore. And of course, I have here volume 16 as well. For this one, I am missing the last two, 17 and 18, to be officially caught up. However, with Inspector, it's pretty interesting that volume four and five are very difficult to find. I don't own these books, nor do I own volumes one, two, three, and six, which, you know, these six volumes cover the first arc. I'm not necessarily a fan of that first arc. It's fine. I just think this stuff post volume six is a lot better. Battle Angel Alita Last Order Volume 18. I got two more books to finally own all of Last Order. It's been an ordeal to get this series and I know a lot of people have asked me in the past and I've said it multiple times. I'm waiting to get all these books in order to do a proper reading and uh, make a video on it. I am missing volume 17, which is horribly out of print and expensive, or I don't know if it's super expensive, I just never see it. So if you guys know where I can find a copy of volume 17, I would appreciate it. I also need to get 19, but that's readily available, so that shouldn't be an issue. Rent a Girlfriend Volume 21, continuing the rom-com series. I know it's been said a lot, uh, and I also agree that this series should have ended ages ago, but we're still going strong with Volume 21, and we're not even up to date with the Japanese releases, which I think are close to reaching 40 volumes. That's insane. I don't know why I decided to collect this series, but I'm in it for the long haul, I guess. So here we have Sugumi Project Volume 3 from Ipatu. Really enjoy this series. Basically, you think uh, Hell's Paradise, but in futuristic post Armageddon Japan, where uh, they are looking for a secret weapon and there are mutated creatures and beautiful scenery of just wrecked towns and cityscapes. And it just looks apocalyptic as hell, but oh, so good. I really enjoy this uh, action packed series. And one of my most anticipated releases of 2023, it is Bochi The Rock Volume 1. Finally have this. I am excited that the anime has a Blu-ray release coming up as well, so I will be picking that up again. I don't usually double dip in that form of having the same series on both a manga and anime format, but for Bochi, I will do it. It's a fantastic, heartwarming, and hilarious series, and I will definitely be talking a little bit about Bochi soon-ish on the channel. Kowloon Generic Romance Volume 5. This is from Yen Press. I really do need to pick this back up. I read it. I did a video on it. Genuinely loved it, but I have not gotten the chance to catch up on Kowloon. But this looks fantastic. I love the art on this. I do have a couple Titan manga releases for the first time on my collection. Here we have Alpi, the Soul Sender, Volume 1 from Rona. This looks really cool. I can't wait to read it and give you my thoughts on it as well. Uh, pretty impressed with Titan manga. I do like how rustic it feels. The paper is a little bit more rugged from your glossy pages as seen on like Kodansha or Viz Media, but it has its charms. It brings me back to like 2003 when I was picking up random Tokyo Pop volumes and Del Rey manga. <laughs> Witch of Thistle Castle Volume 1. I don't know much about it. I just know the basic premise of this witch that she is tasked by the church to take care of this kid who has magical abilities. And I assume bad things are going to happen and she's going to protect him or it's going to be like a teacher student scenario plot. I don't know. But the art looks absolutely beautiful and I'm definitely going to give this a read. Next up, my only Square Enix manga purchase. It is My Dress Up Darling Volume 10. I need to catch up with this. I think the last one I read was Volume 7. And this is my first book that I purchased from the Crunchyroll store. It's an interesting experience because it is the exact same thing as Right Stuff, just a different management team. But the warehouse is the same, the packing elements and all that. The process is pretty similar. And to my surprise, this book, I don't know why it got delayed when on release date. Other websites and physical stores had it on Halloween, but this one was missing from the Crunchyroll store. It shipped like a week later or something like that, and I got it in three days. That has never happened before, so I'm super excited, and I hope that shipping schedule continues with uh, more upcoming purchases when I'm able to make them. And the last manga that we're going to talk about is from Dark Horse Comics. We got the final deluxe edition hardcover for Blade of the Immortal. Here it is, volume 10 of that from Hiroaki Samura, a fantastic fantastic series and now I can finally do a proper read-through of this legendary series and maybe make some sort of video on it uh, for you guys.
guys. Talk about consistency. The first volume came out back in October of 2000. And here we have the final one coming out in October of 2023. That is awesome. And I can finally place it here with the rest of the volumes looking really nice. The only anime purchase for the month of October goes to Evangelion 3.0 plus 1.0 thrice upon a time. Somehow, I have not been spoiled on what happens with this movie. I have evaded spoilers because I did not want to watch it via streaming. It's on Prime Video and I was waiting because I knew it was going to get a Blu-ray release. But here it is from g Kids. I finally own all of Evangelion, everything together. We got the g Kids release for the show with the two movies and Funimation had started doing the rebuild project on Blu-ray. So here we have 1.11, 2.22, 3.33, and now thrice upon a time. So there you go. That is the haul for October of 2023. A little bit late, but like I said, I was waiting for everything to arrive and make a proper video out of it. I am excited for the November haul. It's going to be a little bit insane. Let me know what you thought of this video. Hit the like button. It really does help out the channel a lot. I'd appreciate it. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for commenting and just being a part of Manga Geekdom here on YouTube. It really does mean a whole lot to me. And also let me know in the comment section what you got in the month of October or any recent releases that you got. Pretty interested in finding out. Thank you everybody for tuning in. God bless. Stay safe out there. I will catch all of you on our next video.